from London, England, it's The Q. Covering Discover 2016 London. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillis. Back to London, everybody. We are here at Excel London. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage, and we're covering three days wall-to-wall -wall coverage of HPE Discover 2016, extracting the signal from the noise. Dave Slider is here. He's the Vice President and General Manager of the Communications, Media, and Entertainment Solutions Group at HPE. I'm going to help the telcos clean up that hairball <laughs> and, uh, and doing a good job of that. And, uh, and Paul Godonis, the president of Inmersat Enterprise, a division of Inmersat. Welcome to theCUBE. Good to see you guys again. Thank you. So Thank let's you. start with, with you, Paul. What, what is Inmersat? So we're a uh, global, global mobile satellite communications network provider. Um, we, we basically provide satellite communications to a number of different verticals, including shipping, which is our history and heritage, uh, aviation, governments, and also enterprise businesses. So Dave, this is a good IoT use case we're going to reference before trying to help the telcos, which is a whole different discussion. We're going to focus on IoT today. Talk about your role in your division in, in IoT. Sure, so from an HPE uh, perspective, IoT is all about explosion at the edge. Um, you know, from millions and billions of devices to trillions and quadrillions, so we're adding a couple of zeros there, and of course a company like HP uh, having you know, compute and storage and networking at the edge has a role to play. But the, uh, the interesting part from, from my part of the world, uh, expanding out of the, the telco world, is the connectivity and the device management. So being able to auto-discover these devices when they say hello world and get turned on, you know, you got to provision them, got to fault manage them, et cetera, and it's all got to be automated. You know, there, there can't be any cost. A lot of these use cases are very low revenue, so you've got to be touchless, humanless, automated, very high volume. Paul, I remember the, uh, the explosion of interest. There was a temporary blip of interest in satellite phones back about 20 years ago in the early days of cell phones. Never really took off. Uh, very expensive. Uh, has something changed about the technology now that has made them uh, uh, your type of technology more uh, affordable? Yeah, I, I think uh, it's the same with any technology, really. When it's initially introduced, it's always a lot more expensive, but then as time goes on, components become cheaper, uh, launch systems become cheaper, for example. Uh, actually, the, the economics change vastly, and so we're getting to a position now where actually a voice call on a satellite system is cheaper in some cases than global roaming on a cellular system. And uh, how much of your business is voice versus data? Uh, it's an interesting question. I don't have the numbers exactly, but it's, it, it's changing vastly. So it used to be very much down to voice, but we're seeing the... Uh, the, the change become uh, much more pronounced now, so we're, we're well over the balance, the tipping point of data being the, the major part of what we do. What kind of uh, performance are you able to get over your network for data? Uh, so performance in terms of speed, speed. then um, really you're talking anything from uh, half a megabit a second for a, uh, a BGAN system, which is our real global mobile system, um, at, or up to up to 10 megabits per, uh, per second to 50 megabits per second for a global express KA band. So, very different. So, Dave, what are the use cases you're seeing for edge computing and, and IoT? And I, I want to dig into Paul specifically. Yeah. Uh, so they're all over the place, and it's. Um, and that's the, the interesting thing, as part of this explosion is on multiple axes, right? It's consumer, it's enterprise, it's you know, uh, smart metering, smart cities, uh, smart trash cans, all the way through to the, the stuff that Paul and team are doing. Um, the, the neat thing that we find, though, is that the innovation is occurring with these very specialized, broad uh, ecosystem of companies. You know, they're very, very good at making very specialized devices and very good at making specialized applications in the cloud. They don't want to think about or worry about anything in between. So they come to an HP and they go, look, if you can do the connectivity and the device management as a service and just take care of everything in the middle, we'll do what we're really good at at the edge and in the cloud, and it, it so that ecosystem just explodes because we can take care of that middle for them. And so how are you, Paul, using this edge cloud combination? We've done some research at Wikibon that shows sort of the cloud only, I think you've seen this, Paul, the cloud only cost versus if you do edge, plus cloud, you reduce data volumes, you lower costs significantly. Is that what you're seeing and how are you applying this concept? Well, Dave, Dave actually makes a really uh, really, really key point for us and, uh, and that's the, the point that mostly the, the, the part in the middle 
um, where you have the devices and actually the outcome is of very little interest to, to anybody. It's just it's something that anybody expects just to be there. And, so, and that's where we sit. That, exactly. that's, that's where Inmarsat has always been. And so we can't rely on um, those kind of connectivity sales anymore. We have to really start to develop that whole ecosystem, as Dave put it, that we can actually sell uh, an outcome to a customer. So it's, it's, it's really not just owning that middle, middle ground, but starting to develop the links into both both ends, and that's really what is very important to Inmarsat with this relationship with HP Enterprise. Do you see any industries now that are ahead of the curve in terms of adoption of, of IoT using your technology? Uh, IoT in transportation and logistics has been around for quite some time, but it's still a very uh, simplistic use case. Uh, what we are finding actually is that there's a, a huge amount of take up in, in the energy market, yep. uh, in, in mining, uh, in particular, and also in agriculture. And agriculture is one of the most interesting ones that surprised us really. Uh, you'd expect the energy market and, and mining mm. where you're pressured by commodity prices and a dollar per barrel, trying to use technology to drive efficiencies in your operations uh, is to be expected. But agriculture is actually becoming something that is, shows a lot of interest for us and is an area I think that we, HP Enterprise and Inmarsat, will collaborate on a lot in the future. Why you, is that? I'm sorry, just curious, why agriculture? Well, you think about the challenges that we've got with um, growing populations, uh, problems with water, shortages, uh, it's all about driving the productivity of, uh, of, those, of food production. Mm. And so if we, can, if we can use water in a smarter manner uh, without, without wasting it, if we can actually produce um, food at a lower cost, then we can actually start to um, drive a more sustainable uh, ecosystem for food production. Can we go through a practical example in agriculture? Like, take us through, walk us through. Uh, sure. The situation. Uh, so one actually that we're working on in particular is uh, a plantation. Um, this plantation has a, an issue with being able to drive productivity of of the uh, of the uh, of, of the plantation itself. So the, the issue is that. Um, they have male trees and female trees. And, and basically the male tree uh, really reproduces and drives the growth of the plantation and the sustainability, but the female tree produces the actual crop. Um, and at, at, at the moment, it's been difficult for, the, for the, the farmer to be able to understand exactly what is going to drive the productivity. It's a bit of a, a hit and miss gamble about that mixture of male and female. But what we've actually done is we've, we've realized that you can really see uh, and develop and change that mixture of male and female to drive productivity by controlling the irrigation um, of that area which has an impact on, uh, on the soil type and what, what is created. So by using Inmarsat to provide the connectivity and the sensor technology, HP Enterprise to actually do the data analytics and provide the interface, then we can allow the, the farmer to be able to control the irrigation to drive productivity in the plantation. And you're instrumenting what? The, the, the soil, the trees, the whole so we system? Have, we have uh, sensors in the soil around the, across the plantation hundreds and hundreds of sensors throughout, throughout that whole area, um, which are, are then checking the level of irrigation um, and, and then feeding that information back to a, a data aggregation source, which at the moment is then taking that data back uh, into HP, HP Enterprise's data analytics capabilities and then crunching the numbers and bringing back the output. The interesting thing actually is in the future, which may actually sound a bit strange coming from the connectivity provider, but it's actually doing some of that analytics at the edge, which is going to be really interesting for a lot of our That's customers. That's what I want to ask sure. you, is, 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 isn't that kind of where you ultimately want, well, it depends on how much data you have to move, right? But, mm. but if it's a lot of data, you don't want to have to move it, so. Yeah, well, and you think of this, this use case in, in particular is so intriguing, especially as a relative newcomer from my mm. perspective, right? So you're talking about irrigation ditches on a palm tree plantation where the people are under a lot of uh, pressure, sort of geopolitically, right, not to be knocking down more rainforest and, and planting larger. So increasing the yield on your existing usage, Huge. you got drainage ditches with little dams in them with sensors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we do the analytics and say, hey, section, you know, grid 42 or whatever, send more water or send less. And a little gate opens or closes. All gets uplifted over over satellite and analyzed in the cloud. Now, if you put an edge line server out, and because there's hundreds and thousands of these things, you put a little edge line server out. You can you can optimize what you do on plantation versus in the cloud. When you get when you look at customers who are who are sort of on the leading edge uh, with with uh, remote IoT, particularly occasionally connected, 
what balance are they trying to strike between use of broadband and use of compute resources? Are, are they tending toward minimal connect time and maximum local processing or always connected? What, what does the trend seem to be there? It, it varies hugely based on the use case. If you think of uh, things that involve video and you know, video surveillance and face recognition, et cetera, obviously the implications are you don't want to be back hauling huge, huge amounts. Whereas uh, a smart meter, you know, 50, 60, 70 bytes once a month, send it yeah. to the crowd, you know, if you need to retry it a couple times, not a big deal. So the use cases, and this is back to, you know, the point I made earlier that I think is really, really key, uh, unleashing the power of that ecosystem as, as HPE is saying, we can do the connectivity and we can do the device management, you do the edges, so suddenly there's an explosion and the, the variance is huge, so there is no single answer, I don't think. And you're doing the analytics as well, is that, yeah, absolutely. as a managed service? Mm -hmm. And you learn, right, over time, and, and the, the palm uh, plantation example is a really good one. We're going to learn over time what we should be doing at the edge, what's the optimal use of the, the uh, connectivity satellite, because a lot of these places don't, you know, don't have good coverage of anything but. And you're but you're selling analytics as a service? Yes. Is that, uh, what, yes. what is that, a, a, a haven uh, Yeah, it's service, all part or? of our universal IoT platform uh -huh. that does this device management and analytics that has northbound APIs in, so the, partners uh, like Inmersat can do analytics on their own. We do some base level use cases, and we're finding every use case we do, we add to the capability. And the plantation, are they paying for this as a service, or is it a combination of, they put in infrastructure, obviously they're paying for the sensors, or, and who do they pay? Is it, uh, <laughs> how does that all work? Well, it, it's uh, still early days in a lot of what we're doing, so we're in a, in a proof of concept stage with a lot of uh, these kind of things, and mm -hmm. we're working out the, the, the business models, um, but it will be uh, an as-a-service um, type of system rather than... Uh, and, and, you know. and the customer sees Inmersat, or they see Inmersat and HP? How do you guys go to market? Yeah, it's very much a joint effort. Uh, so they, they, see, they see us both together. It's actually been um, my team that developed this proof of concept initially. Uh, and then engaged with um, HP with this one particular plantation. Um, what, what's been really interesting from, from our perspective is that actually the HP Enterprise team, particularly Gary Wood and his guys, have come back and, uh, and found a number of other use cases. So not just palm plantations, but actually how can you control irrigation to uh, conserve water in a walnut plantation in California, where actually there's a you know, huge issue with um, how you use your water. So, so it's, that, it's that partnership where we're starting to see an initial concept developed by Inmarsat that actually HP Enterprise is just exploding exponentially into other areas uh, and that's, that's the power of the partnership in my Paul, mind. I wonder how you see your business uh, developing from here as IoT takes off so on this huge ramp up right now. Will you be selling complete solutions with compute and sensors or will you be sticking to your, your broadband knitting? Well, we... Uh, we, we have a very loyal and, and um, strong distribution channel ourselves. And, and so, so where we are is at, at the moment, we're developing these proof of concepts and the start of working with HP Enterprise. And the goal is uh, to enable our channel partners to be able to start selling to that into their existing customer bases. So for us, it's about how much value can we drive through that distribution channel? Um, what can we in Marsat provide in partnership with HP right. Enterprise to help them engage with their customers and drive more value? So, Dave, the strategy, if I understand it, is to take advantage of this edge explosion by putting resources on the edge, actually doing the analytics right. locally, reducing the amount of traffic that goes back, which is ironic that you're yeah. actually supportive of that, uh, but the v volumes of data are so high, it's, you know, well, it's a, the opportunity is to provide the service. and Yeah, and, uh, yeah. and I think the, the key is that actually it's about going back to that customer and finding more and more use right. cases. So actually, um, how do you track the individuals on, uh, that are out loan workers in the farm? How do you actually start to put sensors onto vehicles, like tractors, for example, help them with zero unpredicted downtime? Um, can we put, because a lot of these are near the coast, put uh, salinity monitors in to see if there's any seawater coming into the, uh, to the plantation. And so as we start to drive one use case to the edge, and that means less data goes over the Inmarsat connection, we start to find more use cases actually that we can then enable with satellite. And HPE's differentiation is you actually have systems that you can put at the edge right. and do that. Well, I think so. our differentiation is, is the end-to-end, -end, right? The fact uh, that we have the edge is, is fairly obvious. I think what surprises a lot of people is this connectivity and device management mm -hmm. and analytics, the, the platform in the cloud. 
So our ability to go, you know, and the flexible business model where we can go to the Inmarsats of the world and work together iteratively, and, and our view is, look, we'll provide it on-premise, we'll provide it in the cloud, we'll provide it hybrid, we'll provide it as a service, so we can make it economical 100 unit uh, PLC up to, up to billions. And by cloud, you mean whatever cloud you want? Yeah, uh, private, public, whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. it, the variations are huge around the world. Uh, Paul, uh, Google and Facebook have uh, both floated rather phantasmical uh, concepts of making broadband um, uh, 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 universal involving balloons and giant mylar kites and such. Uh, what, do you see any alternative to the satellite emerging in the foreseeable future? Uh, I, I think that the, the use cases are different. So the, the, the Google Loon type projects and the Facebook projects are about, are about bringing connectivity to the unconnected. So um, it's almost about consumer level connectivity, mm. whereas we're about industrial grade enterprise connectivity, which uh, you need to rely on a much different level of system. So uh, I see the two as different. Um, and I, I, I believe that the satellite technology will change, but I still think it will be there. Excellent. All right, gentlemen, we have to wrap. So uh, last, last question for you, Dave. Just give us the vibe of the show, specifically as it relates to IoT. We're kind of in the IoT zone right around here. You're seeing people playing with different devices and, yeah. and oh, it's you know, liquid pumps. It's fantastic. And the energy <laughs> level is uh, every time I think it can't go any higher, and it does. Um, and it, it's really exciting for me and my team, particularly as we've come out of the telecommunications domain to, to be able to work with Paul and the other, this ecosystem that's exploding. Like it's just phenomenal to think of the, the sort of human impact that we're all going to have in the next uh, decade or so. A lot of fun. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Appreciate thank it. You. And, uh, good Thanks. luck with the initiative. All right, yeah. keep it right there. Paul and I will be back with our next guest. This is the HPE Discover 2016. You're watching theCUBE. <laughs>